What's good, family? Welcome back to another WWE SmackDown for February 18th results live overview review whatever we're gonna be talking about it giving our thoughts on it scoring things like that giving you our analysis right before the ple of tomorrow which is the elimination chamber in case anybody forgot uh 12 p.m eastern time 8 a.m west coast time 11 a.m central and pacific only on kids wb but um, <laughs> basically, we're going to go ahead and talk about SmackDown. Now, if you guys don't know, it wasn't live tonight. So if you guys are wondering why there was a lot of piped in cheers and boos, a lot of the talent was already shown earlier in the night because they double recorded two shows in a row last Friday. Um, but anyways, we opened up the show with uh, Aiden Pierce from Watch Dogs, a.k.a. Adam Pierce. He comes out and he's like, hey, we're going to have a contract signing for the new match that was added, which you guys don't know, Naomi and... Uh, Ronda Rousey will be added uh, versus Sonya Deville and Charlotte Flair. That will be added to tomorrow's premium live event as well on Peacock in the States. Um, no advertisement. I just kind of wanted to make sure I clear up that. Uh, anyways, if you guys are new, make sure you're subscribing, dropping a like, things like that, because it helps out me tremendously. And, of course, check out all the social medias down below. Let's go ahead and get straight into it, man. So we had Ronda Rousey and Naomi come out. Uh, honestly, I personally enjoyed this small little promo. Uh, Ronda didn't say much, and Naomi was able to play off of her really well. It seemed a bit more organic than a lot of the interviews in the past, or promos, if you will, um, that they these two women have given that are on the screen right now. So it was good to see that. I think they play well off each other. I think the perfect uh, opposition for them right now is Sonya Deville and Charlotte Flair. Um, and then, of course, they did play on the whole, like, situation of what happened two weeks ago with uh ronda putting sonia in the like the arm breaker and putting her arm in a sleeve which i thought was fantastic um so as you can see there like her her right arm is on the mic but her left arm is you'll see it in a moment it's kind of like stuck on a arm sleeve and of course sonia looking fresh as always same thing with charlotte um they went back and forth had a little promo charlotte didn't really say too much so like maybe like two or three lines tops uh, but then again, Rhonda and Naomi were doing their thing. Rhonda didn't say much either, but the few lines that she did say were very adamant, very like strong, very like badassery. Uh, that's not a word, but I'm calling it that, okay? And then, of course, she was also smiling a bit more. And again, it seemed a bit more organic. It wasn't so like, smile, you're a baby face. It was like, nah, I'm really about to beat your ass. And she was like laughing about it. It was great because she knows she could. And then Charlotte's telling her, no, you can't. And Rhonda's like, uh, okay. Um, so Sonya basically added a stipulation to the match and then there's the cast I was talking about or arm sling, whatever. And basically if, uh, Naomi and, and, uh, Ronda signed that contract, then Ronda must face the match in a one arm tied behind her back because of an interview that she did supposedly where she said she could beat Sonya tied behind one, one arm behind her back. And it was so funny because Sonya was like, um, you sure you don't have to sign it? You can still back out. Ronda didn't even let her finish her sentence and just immediately signed it. I love that. She didn't go and talk anything crazy. She just boom, 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 signed it immediately. And uh, it was like, it was funny to me because realistically, then Ronda goes, I can realistically beat you with both arms tied behind my back. Like it was, it was great. I loved it. I enjoyed the segment. Um, one thing that I did point out. Uh, and they didn't show it here because they knew better. But right before the table flipped over, Ronda took Charlotte and tried to, like, get her to bump her head on the table. Charlotte, like, didn't really sell it that well. But obviously, I mean, it makes sense. You know, I, I wouldn't want to bang my head against the table either if it was Ronda Rousey doing it. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to die. <laughs> so, like, uh, when Charlotte did it, she didn't really hit her head, obviously. They never do hit their head. But the way that she, like, didn't even really sell it, she just kind of, like, slapped her hand. And the camera did, like, 40 different angles because they had to make it look legit. Um, so that was pretty cool. They get outside the ring. There you see the sleeve that I was talking about. And, you know, Charlotte's standing tall as always, looking like the champion as the champion should. Um, next we see Ricochet come out prior to this, uh, Seamus cut a promo saying that, you know, he's going to go out there and he's going to show Ridge Holland how it's done basically. And, uh, they got a match. Seamus and Ricochet did pretty good. Um, good back and forth contest. Really Ricochet always selling as always like, phenomenal high flyer this kid is man i i hope they give him it, it looks like he's won two times in a row in in that same day even though it's spread out to two weeks so i'm hoping that there's some kind of push comes out of this or, or something um 
maybe number one contender for Sami Zayn's IC title now that, you know, a heel is holding it. I could definitely see that. Even if he doesn't win the title per se, like even just a small push into some sort of title contention. Um, Sheamus jumping off the top rope there, phenomenal. Um, Ricochet doing what Ricochet does, hitting the Spanish fly. Um, I know Sheamus landed on his... If I'm upside down, what 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 is that going to be? Right arm? Yeah, it looks like he landed like almost on his like right arm, which is, oh, you know, it's still a little dangerous, but at least it wasn't his head. So that was pretty cool. Ricochet picked up the W by hitting the ripcord. He got distracted with basically Ridge Holland because Ricochet moved out of the way. Uh, Ridge was on the ropes. Sheamus almost broke kicked Ridge Holland. And basically he, you know, he's having a, a discussion with Ridge afterwards like, I don't know if it's a little too soon to split these two up. I would definitely like to see them in a tag team. Maybe go for the titles. Maybe face the Usos at least once or something. Sheamus uh, is a former tag team champion. He knows what it takes to be a good tag team wrestler. Um, I think that just having them paired up a little longer would make sense. He went ahead and pushed Ridge Holland to the floor. Uh, again, I don't know. I mean, we know where they're going with this, obviously. But like, I don't want to. I don't know if him as a face would work if he does go against Sheamus or if Sheamus turns face or. If this is just like a tough love type of scenario, it is what it is. Then the Usos come out. Main event, Jay Uso was going to face one half of the War Raiders, a.k.a. the Viking Raiders. I forgot what they were called for a second. I know that in NXT they were called the War Raiders, but uh, formerly known as the Viking Experience. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's fighting them right now in the ring. And uh, good back and forth contest between both men. Good matches always. This man, his athleticism is ridiculous. He's really good in the ring for sure. Super kick of justice. Look at this. He's doing the Wheel of One pose. I love it. Oh, man. Yep. Pick up the W there. The raid continues. Then Drew McIntyre comes out. Cuts a little promo. Gets interrupted by Madcap and Riddick Moss. Hopefully, once he wins this uh, at Elimination Chamber... I know they're going to spread this out till WrestleMania where he's going to fight Baron Corbin. It is what it is. I, I can't. Let me know how you guys feel about this. I, I'm glad he's getting something to do. I get it. You know, they got to keep him busy till after WrestleMania. Then eventually he will be the one to probably fight Roman. I get it. But I just, I don't know, bro. I, I, I don't know. Okay. So he comes out. He cuts a funny joke as always. Um, Yeah. It, you know. Don't get me wrong, Riddick Moss is really good in the ring. He's actually a lot better than a lot of people thought he was. And I'm sure their match at Elimination Chamber is going to slap. But Drew needs to be doing... I mean, I think he's spent enough time away from the main event scene, especially now that he's on SmackDown. Putting him back in the main event would make sense, even if he does lose to Roman, because uh, him chasing the title has always been better than him having it, in my opinion. And a good opposition is, is, is Roman. Uh, I mean, is Drew, you know? Roman has always looked at him as like the second person, not really the guy. There's a lot of story there. There's the whole Survivor Series match that they had where Drew lost and came up short. Um, there's just a good storytelling there. Next, we have the pre-main event right before the main event promo between Goldberg and Roman. This was the main event match of the night. Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, the entire match, I'm not going to lie to you. Sami Zayn was really strategical about this, and that's why they call him the strategist, obviously. Um, but he was focusing on Shinsuke Nakamura's left leg. Everything he did was care carefully executed towards around that leg. Um, it was just a really smart move because he essentially took out the Kinshasa. Now, the argument could be made, well, he could hit it with the other leg, but the, the philosophy behind it is that he can't really run either if he's limping, which he won't get the full force of the Kinshasa, thus Sami Zayn having the upper hand and being able to deliver his finishing maneuver and win the match. Um, good match between the two as always. Shinsuke doesn't disappoint. He realistically, I think he only defended the title like three times in the entire like year he's held the freaking title. Um, he did have a hand injury, so I don't know how much that came into play as far as like uh, title contention or storylines or just, uh, you know, facing someone for the title. I, again, I, I can't speak on that, but he did have a hand injury for quite some time, so it makes sense. Um, and then, of course, Shinsuke and Rick Boobs are, uh, Boobs are a tag team now, so him and him going after the tag team titles would make a bit more sense. Uh, I think it'd be refreshing to have a new contention team on the uh, on the front lines there instead of the New Day, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that that's 
what pretty much wind up happening. He attacks the left leg there. Uh, he tells him, come on. Really good philosophy here. Again, targeting the left leg, as I stated. Like, really good in-ring work. Um, it was pretty standard, really. He hits the uh, Michinoku driver there. Also does the blue thunder bomb. Winds up winning the IC title by basically kicking his left leg. Uh, and basically like flipping him over but then he winds up pinning him but he grabs the right leg i, I don't know if that was like on intentional or, or what or if my camera was not looking correctly i don't know let me know if you guys saw what i'm talking about but when he pinned him shisuke goes back to grabbing the left leg but he pinned him using the right leg over here so like the left leg was back you know was pinned as well but like the, the leg that sammy grabbed to to get the pin was the right leg uh, again, again, I could be wrong on that. Let me know. But I, I don't think I am because I'm pretty sure I watched it like four times. Uh, shout outs to Sammy, though. He's now back in his IC title picture because he's obviously the champion. Um, now we get fresh challengers. You know what I mean? Fresh uh, storylines. The IC title will be a bit more prominent now that Sammy Zayn will have it. Um, the conspiracies came true. You know, he was right about everything. Uh, it was cool to see the, the payoff for this. It was like one year in the making. Good story. And... With any luck, maybe they'll turn him face again. I mean, Sammy is really good at, a, at an underdog, as an underdog. I just don't know how to work now that he's champion. I always did like him more as a face, so it just made more sense. He got more mic time. He was more... Uh, but again, I also love his annoying heel character that he has right now, too. So it's like, leave him as a heel for a champ. And then if he ever loses the title, turn him back. I, I mean, I'm cool with it. Next, we have the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns. He comes out. We're waiting for Goldberg here. Um, he says, acknowledge me. The crowd start chanting his name. He gets a little shocked by it, and he looks at him like, all right, yeah. Like, you know, he doesn't, like, nod a lot in acceptance, but he's like, he looks at them like, yeah, they're chanting my name, yeah. Then he tells them, then he says, wise man, you know, uh, boast about me. And, he, you know, Paul Heyman goes on to cut his fantastic promos as always. I mean, it speaks for itself, right, the pose. Goldberg comes out being escorted by these two little guys. Uh, they're literally like as skinny as I am, you know, but shorter than me. I'm 6'1". <laughs> they're freaking like 5'5 five five or something. Like, you know, they're like literally as skinny as I am, like protecting a man like this. It, it's not believable at all. Goldberg is 50 years old. And if I could look half as good as this man when I get older, we're good. Like he literally, what, what, what was Goldberg weigh? Like 230, 240? More? Like, bruh. Steroids or not, he still puts in the work. Like, the man is brawling, and I'm not trying to sit here and boast him or anything, um, but that's exactly what I'm doing. I don't care. Like, the man looks good for his age, you know what I mean? And, and just having those two little, like, little peoples as a security guard just didn't make sense to me. Like, it's part of his entrance, I know, but it's like they weren't even trying to, like, look like they were protecting him. It's like, like, as soon as they got near the place where he goes to walk out the ramp, like the gorilla, as they call it, I don't want to really use too much verbiage of wrestling, but... He just walks away from them, and they don't even, like, try to, like, look around to make sure he's safe to go that way. Like, they, it, it just wasn't, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, they come out. They have a little talk, you know. Roman's like, um, are you here to talk or fight? Answer my question. Like, talk. You know, like, say something. Obviously, the fresh ones, as always, our tribal chief is always rocking the shoes. He goes, you know what? Roman, I want to apologize. You're not next. I am. And then he does, you know, his spiel like, I'm going to be the next Universal Champion, blah, 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 whatever. Um, a lot of people think that this is going to be Goldberg's last match. Keep in mind, this match was two years in the making. Um, please let me know who you got down below. But it would make sense if this is, I'm okay with this being his last match and going into the sunset for a while. Um, as of right now, he stated they haven't offered him a new contract, which could be, you know, a lie, obviously. Um, but we don't know. Um, do you guys want this to be his last match or not? I figured I'd leave you guys with the the preview of the card real quick before we head out. Uh, so basically, we're going to have the five, six man WWE Champion Elimination Chamber match, which again, keep in mind, this is tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time. What? 9 a.m. West Coast time. I apologize. Not PT. I, I, regardless, West Coast is 9 a.m., 12 p.m. Eastern, um, and then 11 p.m. Central and Pacific, only on Kids WB. So like I was saying, I'm thinking either Seth or Brock want out of this, uh, walk out of this. I want to say Seth off the strength that Brock already has a title contention, 
And if they want to make it a triple threat and unify the titles, even if Seth loses, I think he's earned the main event at least once in his career. I would like that to happen. Um, I think he deserves it. He's done really good character work recently. He's been a, a steady flag bearer for the company. You know what I mean? Like he's uh, he's he's competed a lot. Like I think he's earned it. You know what I mean? Like I think he's been there busting his ass day in and day out. Um, women's match. I'm going Alexa Bliss. I want her to win. If not, Rhea Ripley. Um, I don't anybody but Bianca realistically. Um, just because we've already been there, done that. Uh, but Rhea versus Becky hasn't happened yet. Alexa Bliss versus Becky with the character shift that they have now hasn't happened yet. Um, Liv, even winning again would be cool, but I would rather them save her for like maybe like... Well, I, I mean, I can't even say SummerSlam because there might be like a unification for Ronda versus Becky if she keeps the title till then. But regardless, uh, Becky and Lita. This match, I I'm not expecting too much out of it. And for that reason, I'm hoping it's a banger, low-key, because when you don't expect much of something, they, it's easier to impress you because you're not going in with high standards. Um, so even though I want it to be a banger, I'm not expecting much from Lita because she's a little older now. But we had three women's matches uh, compared to one from last year. This is a huge accomplishment for the ladies and just society in general over there. So without getting too political, I'm happy that there's three women's matches and they're all pretty good. Um, I'm going Becky for retaining. Roman and Goldberg, I'm going Roman. Uh, Usos and the Viking Experience. No, I'm just kidding. The the the, the Viking Raiders. Um, I'm going Usos, uh, Ronda and Naomi versus Charlotte and Sonia. Obviously, I'm going Ronda and Naomi. We have the Miz and Rey Mysterio. I'm going Rey Mysterio because of the 2K22 cover. It would make sense if he won. Uh, Drew and Madcap. I'm going Drew. They had a good, really good match last time, so hopefully they put this match at the beginning, get it out of the way. Uh, or if they really want to do it crazy, they have the women open and then Drew and Madcap afterwards. Um, but again, let me know who you guys got down below. Let me know if I missed any matches. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Keep on keeping on. Peace.